this is going to be part one of a light switch tutorial and it does have a prerequisite which is creating our ray trace class now this ray trace class is going to be used as it will point from our character's starting ray like a line from our character's head to the direction that we are looking at so that way we can interact with miscellaneous stuff such as these light switches now we will be modeling these light switches both on and off in blender as well as making their collision meshes and showing you how to export the collision meshes along with it. So if we go over here, collision, you can see our simple collision. Ooh, way too fast. And it is just outside the front of the mesh, just like we do what well, we will be making in Blender. And also, we will be setting up these light switches as our little point light objects, well, actors. So we can simply drag one of these out into the world. Just give it a mesh of our light switch. And for example, I have these two lights right here, point light one, point light two. If we look over here, we will have it set up so where we can add our own lights to it. And if we add one light, you will see point light one and point light two. We can add point light one, or if we want to add several lights, that will be controlled by this switch. We can add point light two, so on and so on, all the way through to work how we want. So that way we can have a very big room, for example, with several lights in it. We can control them all by one switch, or if you have a breaker box, you can control sub like various portions of the house control one room with one breaker box switch, one room with another. So, we go ahead and get started. Okay, this is going to be part one of our light switch tutorial. And since, well, I'm here to try to help you kind of do literally everything from the get-go, we're going to actually be modeling this ourself, ourselves in Blender. So go ahead and open up Blender. And you will come up with this little cube here. Now a quick little rundown on actually moving about in Blender. If you click and hold your middle mouse button, you can pivot around a certain axis. You scroll in, you zoom in, you scroll out, you zoom out. And now other keys are if you hold shift and hold your middle mouse button, you can see it kind of pans around this view. If you hold control and middle mouse button, you can zoom in or out. Now I want to point out something that happens to a few people, including myself. Let's say you zoom in really far, just like so, you can't zoom in any farther. Well, I'm holding shift and I'm trying to drag myself around, but nothing's happening. Well, it's because you zoomed in, to, well, literally to as far as you can go. You're not, you don't have anything to pivot around. So we have to zoom out a little bit. As you can see, you can move around now. But what if you wanted to zoom in farther past that? Well, zoom out a little bit so you can move freely like so. Hold Control and Shift. Then take your middle mouse button, hold it down, and move forwards just by simply moving your mouse up. And now, as you can see, I can zoom in farther. I can zoom in into that box. It's kind of taking your camera's pivot location, moving it forwards. So that's one way to think about it. So now just to set up our project a little bit, just change unit presets, set that to meters. And I want to actually export my mesh here so we can have something to go by for scale. So as you can see here, this is the skeletal mesh for it. So we can right click and somewhere Except, yeah, asset actions and export and as you can see it's going to export as a fbx so i'm just going to move this to my desktop leave the name as the same leave everything as default 
and click export. So now we'll have this file right here, which is our mesh. So now we can go ahead and import this into Blender by doing File, Import, Import FBX, then finding our mannequin. So double click on it. And as you can see, there he is. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this box, this normal cube here. So you can do that just by clicking on the box, press X, and delete. Now I don't want these little spikes in the way. So you, so you can see there's a difference between the spikes and the mannequin. So click the spikes, press H to hide. And now we have our mannequin all by himself that we can use as a reference to scale. Now you can actually see the dimensions of our mannequin. If you press in, you will bring up this little window on the side here, like so. You can see he is 1.82 meters tall. So for example, if you're going to be building a wall to import, well, you could base it off of that. So what we're going to do is make another cube and make that into just kind of a rectangle shape for our light switch. So shift A, go to mesh, click cube. Now one setting that I want to turn on is this right here, which is snap during transform. Click that so it shows up as color. Then on this little drop down here, you want the snap element to be increment. So this should be snapping on this little axis, like our little uh, human jiggers here. So as you can see, it goes between them just like so. So if we press 7 on our number pad, we'll go to the top down view. And moving around here is all the same. Just hold shift move your mouse around by holding the middle mouse. We're going to move the cube a little bit this way, just out in front. And then you can press, just hold down your middle mouse button to rotate around to get back to this normal view like so. Now we need to scale this in to make it a lot thinner. So what we can do is press S for scale. And as you can see, that's scaling in all dimensions. So actually we can go ahead and do that, make it the smallest cube possible like so. I'm going to drag, I'm actually going to reset the location up here to 0, 0, 0, so it's dead center. I'm going to press 3, no, eh, yeah, I guess 3, and yeah, I'm just going to leave this free cam. And drag this up, and out one. Also, you can press Z to go into wireframe mode, just like so. I'm going to press 7 again, just to bring it closer to his hand. There we'll, here we'll be able to really kind of scale it, get a just a good sense of scale here. Now you can do world world, yeah, real world sizes, like whatever the standards are. But I've already done this before in my own little project, and I've had to scale that up just a little bit where it actually looked remotely decent. So you're, odd, you're probably best bet just to go off of what looks nice to you. So I want to make this thinner so we can scale it on a certain axis. So press 1 on your number pad to go into this front view. Zoom in quite a bit on it. As you will see, the more you zoom in, the more these little squares appear on the grid go to where you can just faintly see them, press S, then X, as you can see that line appears left to right just like so. If you press Y, the line will be, well, in a direction that we can't see from this view, and Z is up or down, but we want X. So shrink it on the X axis, I'm just going to make it one block wide, and as you can see it's 20 centimeters thick. Now if you go to, for example, on Unreal Engine, I want to drag out a, uh, well, I can actually just give an example with an object real quick. 
let's take this couch. So if you look up here, position grid snap value, it's set to 10. So that means if I move it this way, each time it moves, it is moving 10 I mean 10 centimeters. So if I set this to 1, it is moving 1 centimeter each time I move it. And that holds true in Blender as well. So as you can see, the dimensions are 20 centimeters thick. That means it's going to be, well, it's kind of hard to see because I don't have a grid pattern laid out right now. That would be 10, 20 meters thick roughly in here. Although this does not look like 20 centimeters to me. So I may have something a little bit goofy here. But anyway, when you're making stuff for like a building, that would be something to go off of. So press 3 on the number pad, then press Z to make it smaller so we can see the hand, including the size of our mesh, our cube. We're going to press S, scale, and then Y. We're going to bring it in to probably... I think this is good. It's a little bit wider than the hand. We're going to scale it one more time on the Z axis. So S, then Z. That's just a little bit big in all directions. So I'm going to press 3 again. I'm not going to scale it on anything specific. I'm just going to press S. Drop down by 1. And that should be okay for now. We can go ahead and round these up. So 2 cm. I'm just going to make this 12 centimeters. And just round this to 16 centimeters actually make this quite a bit thicker so on the wait no I'm sorry this is two centimeters thick I was looking at the X value for whatever reason but this right here is exactly two centimeters thick so probably better off having this as one centimeter since it's just barely going to be protruding from the wall and as well as That'll make it very nice, so we can just move it one centimeter throughout the uh, our world when we're moving it. So now we have a crappy little square. Well, we need a little knob that we can see that we can flip on and off. So one way we can do that, I'm going to go ahead and just move this out of the way so I can see it clearly, is simply create that that little knob as a separate cube. So just like before, Shift A, Mesh, Cube, and scale it all the way in. Not that far. Now I know I need to make it smaller, so do just what you learned before. So 7 to view top, S to scale on that way, and then X for this position. I want to make it Just leave it at 2 centimeters for now. Then do the same thing for the top. S, Y, scale on the Y axis. Just like so. Then one more. Press 1 on the number pad. S, and on the Z axis. Now we can actually bring this closer. To our mesh here right in the center. That's right in the middle. So now we need to make this look a little bit more like a uh, well, the switch. So what we can do is we can actually go into edit mode by pressing tab and I have the wrong thing selected. Make sure you have your little switch selected. Press tab come down here so we're going to do face select this is we can select faces 
such as this face, this face, this one, whatever, so we can tinker around with it. But I want to select that one and this one. Press S. Actually, it doesn't matter which one I press. And press Y. We're just going to make it. That's about thin enough. Then select this front face. We are going to go out. So press 1 on the numpad to get into this view. Go out just want that one little more. So it's nice and long, just like so. Now we need to give it kind of that tapered angle. So if I bring up an image of a light switch. I just you can see it kind of goes well it's relatively thin and it's just one continuous thin square at an angle we can press tab to go out of edit mode and press R rotate it up now we kind of want to make it a little bit thinner on this direction here. So we can go back and do edit mode. Select, well, actually we can just scale it on that 1x. Yeah, we'll scale it on the z-axis a little bit. Probably about, yeah, that's pretty. That's not horrible. Now let's move it in so this corner is fully hidden away. And we have, well, this. This is our little on light switch. Not very detailed. You can spend more time on this yourself. So we need to, since these are currently two separate objects, we need to join them. So select one or the other, then hold shift, click the other object, so this little one first, then this big portion, press control J. And now these are one object, not separated. So let's go ahead and rename it to light switch on. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a material to go over here. You'll see this little sphere. Click new. And it now has a material. Now we need to make an off variation of this light switch. But first we need to do something very very important. That is make a um, well you need to set the scale and rotation. So to do that, it is click the object, press Control A, then click Rotation and Scale. And as you will see, these numbers over here, or press Control Z, they go from just miscellaneous. So this is going to be all over the place when we import it into the editor to one. So we're at a multiplier. So this is a one-to-one -one scaling of what we see here. So now we can go ahead and make, well, first off, let's actually create a little collision mesh for this. What we can do is simply make a new cube, shift A, scale it all the way down. We're going to make this one centimeter. Go ahead and drag it to be on the location of this one. All right, and this mesh is 12 centimeters on the y-axis, so 12 centimeters. Click this one again, it is 16 centimeters on the z. And now let's just line it up.
as you can see. I am way off on that one. But it fits perfectly. It is exactly the shape of the frame of the light switch. So we're going to be using this, this straight square, as our collision mesh. So just like before, control A, and rotation, and scale. Now if we come over to our static mesh pipeline, on the wiki page, well, docs, sorry, and you scroll down a little bit, come to this little portion here. This is what we would name our collision meshes. So this one, we would use UBX for essentially boxes. The boxes are created with the box object type. So this would be something that's incredibly simple, such as our, well, our little box here. So the naming convention for this is UBX. So we would click our cube right here, name it UBX underscore the name of the mesh, which in our case it is light switch on. And if you had multiple collision meshes for one single mesh, you would do underscore, then the number. But since we only have one mesh for this light switch, we're just going to leave it at one. So let's go ahead and just drag it so it fits perfectly. And I'm going to go ahead and just actually drag these. Oh. First off, we need to actually duplicate them, sorry. So we can use that mesh later. So let's click our light switch that is on. Press 1 on the number pad. Press Shift D to duplicate. And drag it out just like this. Now let's flip this around. So on the... I think it would be the Z-axis. We're going to turn it 180 degrees. That is not the right direction. Y, 180. Not the right direction that I want. X, 180. There we go. So now as you can see, we have this switch pointing up, the switch pointing down. Let's go ahead and relate, rename this to light switch off. And we can control A, apply rotation scale. So our rotation is back at zero for it being flipped upside down. So we have two meshes, one for on, one for off. And we need to do the same for our collision mesh. Shift D. And drag it out. That dragged way out there because I have the uh, mapping tool on. And just drag this one onto the off light switch. And drag this one onto the on light switch. So the rotation is zeroed and scale is set to 1. And same thing for everything. So we should now be good to go. So now when we go to export these, select light switch off, hold down shift and left click to light switch on, UBX light switch off, the UBX light switch on. Now we go up here to file, export, FBX. And I'm going to save these on my desktop. I'm going to make a new folder real quick. Just to have this nice and organized. Put you in there too. Do, do we need, did not refresh. Light switch tutorial. Oh wait, no, sorry. Don't uh, only select what you want. So I want to select the light switch off and the collision mesh for the light switch off. My apologies. We're going to give it a name. Light switch off. And save it to our desktop under new folder. New folder. 
Let's switch tutorial. And save. And I forgot to do something. Go file, export, right back. Do the same thing again. So we're going to overwrite this. And make sure to check selected objects. And then export it. Now do the exact same thing for light switch on. So light switch on. And the light switch on collision. File, export as an FBX. Name it to light switch on. Now if we go to view them, light switch on, and light switch off, our light switch off, looks fine, and our light switch on, which again looks fine. Now we can import these into Unreal Engine. Let's make a new folder here. Click Content, Add New, Folder. We're going to call this, and we can just name it Light Switch. Probably not the greatest. Open it up, right click, and import to, well, Game4 slash Light Switch, our directory. We're going to go find where we just save those two meshes to. So we're going to highlight, drag, well, highlight, click open, and simply click import all. Now you can ignore these little warnings here. You'll see we have two light switches, including the material for them. We're not really worried about. So this oops there we go so on oh, we can just place them right here so light switch on and guess what some I do want to show you well we have our light switch up here but the way we access it it's way over here. It's down and to the right. Let's look in Blender. Well, here's the center and our light switch. Well, our center is down and to the right of our light switch. So when you're making objects and you go to export them, you always need to have them in the dead center of the, well, wherever you're trying to set them to in Blender. I want to show you something as well. So first off, let's go ahead and let's say you right click somewhere and you moved your cursor. Well, you can press Shift S and click Cursor to Center. Your cursor is back at the center. And we're going to select Light Switch On, our mesh here. Press Control, Shift, Alt, C, and press Origin. 3D cursor. So this is now moved down here. Then press Control Alt Shift C again to geometry to origin. Just like so. Now whenever we go to export it, it will be in the dead center of our mesh, which I'm going to go ahead and delete here. Now do the same thing for the uh, collision. Mesh. We're going to select our light switch on and our light switch on mesh and export this. Now I can go ahead and press H to hide this. We're going to select our, do the same exact thing here. Or our light switch off. Then we select our light switch off. Let's switch off collision, file export, FBX, and export it off. Now instead of re-importing it, what we can do is just simply right click on light switch, on and off, then click re-import. As you can see, it has been done. So now, when I drag our light switch on to this wall, you can see 
for sure it's facing the other direction. Yep. <laughs> so you can see the origin is at the dead center of the light switch. That makes it so a lot easier to move all this stuff around. So just like before, we can, like I said, we can set this to one, and it fits perfectly, snapping right on the grid onto that side of that wall. And same thing with our light switch off, which rotated 100 and something odd degrees. I rotate that on. Z. And move this out a little bit. So, we have our light switch on and off. And just like if we test, also, our re prerequisite for this is we need to add that to the beginning of the file. Was our ray trace function, our class here. Whenever we press E on it, just like if we were to trace a ray, like in the beginning of the video, that would bring up. Our light switches. Well, we need to do one more little thing here because we're going to be doing our own little setup for it specifically. So go ahead and delete these two. Under C classes, we're going to right click, do C class. We're going to be creating an actor. Now click next. And give it a name, light switch, and create the class. Give that some time. We can go ahead and file, save as our little Blender project. I'm not going to bother naming mine since I'm probably going to delete it. It is only 6 in the morning. <laughs> oh, good grief. Alrighty. So now, since our light switch glass here is an actor, what we can do is, for example, just click and drag it out somewhere into the world. And we can actually give it a mesh. And I created the, that should not have been an actor, I don't think. And like I said, it's almost 6 a.m., so I'm a little out of it. But why I couldn't see the mesh in here, we have to actually add that. So click Add Component. Just type in mesh. We're going to add a static mesh. Now you can see we can now actually interact with it. That's just a little ball for now. Click our drop down box. And we're just going to select light switch off. And just rotate it. It's close enough. It's visible. So what we're going to be doing in the future, actually I can actually do this right now real quick. It's not going to take very long. I'm going to go ahead and make place down something else as well in the world. Uh, click modes, lights, point light. Let's just add it right here. We're going to make it so you can choose and select which lights you can easily interact with. So this is, I'll just call this point light one. I'm going to alt drag another one as well. So we have point light one, point light two. Now in our C++ header file, we can make a private section, private. This is going to be editable from the editor, so you property, edit anywhere, category equals lights. 
Now we need to include something so we can just forward declare. Can't quite remember what it was. No, engine A point light. Okay, yeah, the name is literally A point light. So forward declare it. Class A point light. Uh, just call it lights. And control shift B. Let it build, run its header tool. And when we click our little light, this is why I'm making a separate class just for this. Look here. See? We have a new category called lights. And it's a list of point lights. So as you can see, we place down point light one, point light two. We can select which light we want to use. So we can assign point light one or point light two. We can take this a step farther if we want to have, let's say, one light controls a large room that has several lights in it. Or for example, you have a breaker box. But what you can do is you can make a T array. So T array and the type which is well this and then the name we want to call it then control shift B again to build do, 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 do. Now if we go back into it, as you can see, our little light, we now have array, well, zero array elements. So we can add a light to it by clicking the plus symbol, and we can then select our lights. So I'm going to select both, point light one. Select the second one, point light two. And it's as simple as that. So this is going to conclude part one of our light switch. And part two, we are actually going to be making this functional. So when we press E on the light switch, we're going to, we're actually going to be making an object interaction class on our character itself, the guy jumping. And when we press E, it's going to send out a ray. And if that ray happens to hit our light switch, it is going to switch from the our light switch off mesh to the light switch on mesh so you can visibly see it change and then it's going to turn the lights that it has selected in that array like i just showed on or off depending on the position or which mesh we have and then there's going to be a part three after that in which case we're going to be making this well work over the network so if one player, let's say client 1, presses E on the light switch to turn the lights on, that light switch is going to be visible, like the light switch is going to be showing that it's on, so that little switch is going to be up for everybody on the server, as well as the lights are going to be on for everybody on the server. And if client 5 comes by and turns it off, the light switch is going to be in the down position, and all the lights are going to be off for everybody on the server. This concludes part one of our tutorial, and I will see you for part two.